So you have a HTD and you've uh, printed something you shouldn't have done together. In my case, I printed ABS on one nozzle and PETG on the other to act as an interface to relatively easily remove um, the part, the ABS part from the PETG support. Um, now I have my build chamber at max 65 degrees Celsius and apparently um, the PETG doesn't appreciate that very much. And if you can see, that has kind of gone wobbly. Uh, and then what happened was the drive gear flattened it. So, yeah, problems. Um, I've done this three times, I hate to say it, but um, we're all human in different scenarios, not PETG and ABS together before. Um, so I just thought I'd do a quick video to explain the easiest ways of uh, removing the block. Um, so basically you want to remove your front cover. Um, you then want to remove both of the nozzles, very straightforward. So um, once you've removed these three screws um, and you've pulled the filament out as far as you can at the bottom, and tried to pull the filament up here as much as possible, um, which you can do by depressing these little um, black things and then pulling the uh, cord out. The AMS, I would advise doing this with stuff off because the AMS will, uh, if it's loaded, will try and feed the filament out and it gets messy very quickly. So anyway, you've cleared the filament out of this area as much as possible. You remove these three screws. Um, now you want to you want to pull this part out and you want to basically push this that's the pin you want to push it all the way up to the top and shimmy it out and then you want to just gently pull that lever in and then it just comes out um so it, it's hard to do one-handed but the fact i've done it one-handed sort of shows you that it is relatively easy um Basically, this is the back side of that. So you have uh, this spring-loaded guide for the um, left extruder. So the filament comes. Let's just zoom in a bit. The filament comes in there, uh, and this is reversed. This is the left side. It would be that way round. Gets fed in through there, down this silver tube. And then the extruder would be in there. And then when it's retracted, that slides up with the extruder and is out of the way. The reason it's a bit difficult to get off is because if you see this thing here, this is actually the filament cutter. So um, it actually comes across. Let's see if I can show you. It comes across and cuts filament in the tube so it doesn't come in the way you'd expect um, so when you when you're trying to take it off um, this, see there's a gap here um, the filament cutter is this bit here um, and that drops into this this groove that, that needs to come out through there so it's a little bit hard to explain so basically the same is reverse when you put it back on. You want to push that all the way up, all the way back up, and then that the cutter fits into that groove. So you basically take this off, you declog, which is relatively simple. It's just getting it off because the the filament will be up here or here. This is the drive gear in the middle, um, and that directly fits into those. So when you try and pull this out. Not only are you fighting this, so you have to slide that up. Um, you're also having to fight the two bits of filament that are jamming this in place. Um, so basically, the reverse, as you put this on like here, line up, you push your filament all the way, uh, sorry, the, that left nozzle piece all the way up. And then you then just gently push that in. Uh, and then gently in on the other side, like that, and that is it. So then your filament cutter, both sides are working. This one, easy, this one, 
um, if you don't so let me just try and do it wrong for you um, I've got to pop that up there. yeah so let me just take it out makes it easier to explain so this goes in here and drops down and then when the cutter cuts when the cutter cuts it comes across like that and it cuts the filament um, so what what you're having to do is you're having to lift this up through that gap but it's not big enough so you have to open that a little bit feeding it through the gap and then letting it drop down you can remove it all apart um, but that's the easiest thing to do um, and it is handed so just try not to let that try not to let the cutter fall out um, but hopefully that gives you enough information again you can line up then push that all the way up then give it a bit of force and that's it this one kind of just goes in and that's it and then you put your, your three screws back together and you wonder why you ever fed ABS and PETG together at the same time and then you think about putting a post-it note on the front of the machine that says don't be an idiot don't do it because <laughs> it's um it is it is a pain in the ass. Um, and Bamboo have done a relatively good, good job at keeping this simple but also if you don't know exactly what to do then it's a nightmare the first couple of times I did it I didn't know what to do um, and it was just an actual nightmare to work out why it wouldn't come off um, like I said it's not easy because um, you're actually fighting multiple things. You're fighting the filament cutter and you're fighting the filament itself that's jammed. Um, yeah, which isn't isn't good. Um, honestly, 3D printers are always a learning curve, aren't they? Um, so you want to do those up, make sure they're all right, make sure this is moving all the way up and, and that your filament cutter's working both sides and they're free. Um, and then yeah, simple, just putting these all back in, and again I see people all the time put these in and them come off, I'm not exactly sure how that happens, I think it's probably um, issues with parts getting caught, I forget how difficult these ones are to put in, oh it would probably help if it was down wouldn't it? That's why. That would make that makes life a little bit easier. Sorry, it's because I'm <laughs> trying to do the video at the same time. Oh, I guess that's probably what people are doing, to be honest. See, that's not in right. There you go. Yeah, yeah, it is quite easy to get wrong, to be honest, with that one that drops down. Yeah, but anyway, that's pretty much all good together. As well, I would recommend switching these over when you put the, because you want to try and put the rubber sock on when that um, filament ooze blocks in the way, because it will bend it, and if you bend it, you have to take it off and bend it back, or replace it, I guess. Yeah, so that's it. All working back as it should be. Um, hopefully that was useful. Um, again, it's not... It's not... Let's just make sure that's working all right. Yeah, it's not um, that straightforward, to be honest. But it is only three screws with a little bit of finesse. Thanks for watching.